shuttle Atlantis to assemble the framework for the science laboratories of tomorrow. The uh, STS-117 mission was a critical one in the assembly sequence of the International Space Station. So uh, 117 had a huge piece of the truss which had a solar array contained within it. And the job of the 117 mission was to bring that piece of truss up, attach it with the robotic arm on the starboard side, and then eventually we would unfold a new solar array to help us generate electricity on board the station. This will be my first spacewalk. I was a rookie on 117. But doing a spacewalk, for all practical purposes, is similar to doing a reverse scuba dive. You go from a very high pressure, which is inside the pressurized compartment, 14.7 PSI, to the vacuum of space, which is zero PSI. Tomorrow will be a big day for the EVA folks. Uh, our first EVA with uh, Jim Riley and uh, Danny Olivas. They'll spend tonight in the airlock of the space station, depressed down to 10.2, in preparation for their spacewalk tomorrow. There were a lot of connections that needed to be fastened, um, a lot of procedural steps that had to be followed in sequence. It involved a, a pretty significant effort to figure out the logistics of how do you assemble this thing appropriately so that you don't leave your crew without a habitable module, without power, without thermal protection. And, and ultimately, it, it really was a, a giant jigsaw puzzle. and you unfold a solar array and it's connected with all its electrical lines and then it sees sun for the first time, it's gonna generate electricity. Well, the surge of current through that generated electricity was apparently more than one of the Russian electronic boxes could handle. So as the current surged through that box, it fried that box. A problem was experienced by the Russian computers not just one, but three of the command and control computers. You always ask yourself when something goes wrong, what changed, what do we do? And the most obvious thing that we came up with was that, you know, wow, we just brought up a big electrical component and we attached it to the space station. You know, is it possible that that action is what caused this other thing to occur? Is it possible that there may have been some sort of static electricity that, that when we attach it to the space station that maybe we zap something? And consequently that meant power down. We had to shut computers off left and right. We had to shut electrical systems off left and right. Science instrumentation that was not necessary. It went from being a bright research laboratory to kind of this really eerie, a lot of dark shadows, and just a, kind of a, an eerie ship at that point. You could tell that there was a notable change in the environment of the space station. I think there was a sensation that most people had, you know, dull headaches. You could tell that the CO2 levels were rising, although we were saying, below any, any critical levels. It just made for a, a rather uncomfortable working situation that you just had to power through.